helianth at gmail.com, which is the YouTube page as well, H-E-L-I-A-N-T-H, like helicopter with anthropology, Healy, H-E-L-I-A-N-T-H. So uh, this will carry on from that point. Um, so this is uh, UC Berkeley, and I'm talking here uh, in the anthropology department about naked virtual Harbin, an anthropology of erotism in the touristic imaginaire. And I'm Scott McLeod, and it's November 2nd, 2012. And this is also uh, in a Google Hangout. In a talk I gave here at Berkeley a few years ago on the paper I wrote, Gazing at the Box, Tourism in the Context of the Internet and Globalization, Internetity. Hello, Nelson. In the archaeology building, just over here, I argued that touristic imagination in the context of globalization and the Internet has changed in specific ways by increasing the role of representation in shaping it, by both extending and lessening the ideological uh, distinctions between micro-milieu and macro-milieu articulated in Thoreau and Thoreau's tourism analysis with effects on imagination, and by extending the touristic imagination through information and advertising. I also argued that virtual tourism in virtual worlds and by surfing the web for museums, monuments, and other heritage sites, such as for UNESCO World Heritage Sites or the online Louvre Museum in Paris, extends the touristic imagination in different ways from mobile tourism. In addition, I suggested that these new internet-related touristic developments all contribute to the way one might model the vicarious experience of tourism, both digital and mobile. In conclusion in that paper, I suggested that globalization and the internet, a new condition which I called internetity, vis-a-vis -vis modernity and postmodernity, create new kinds of touristic imagination, superseding and encompassing discourses of modernity and postmodernity and advertising. So those are the sort of three conditions. I think Dean McCandles, <coughs> the tourist, comes from perspective of modernity. I think Uri and Uri and also um, uh, Dean McCandle's uh, more recent paper on virtual pla reality places comes from the perspective of a kind of postmodern interpretation. Advertising it offers yet a different interpretation of tourism and then the information age internetity offers yet a fourth as kind of conditions. The internet thus amplifies, facilitates, and extends the touristic imagination. I use actual and virtual Harbin Hot Springs as main examples to explore concepts of the virtual vis-a-vis -vis the touristic imagination. So imagine yourself as an anthropologist newly coming to Harbin Hot Springs in the early 2000s, decades after the 60s have passed, and beginning to do field work. As your field work develops, you find that your participant observation focus is drawn to the Harbin pools neither a traditional field nor terra firma, and where a curious kind of harmonizing and openness seems to emerge. Imagine further that you are completely new to anthropology and that Harbin will become your place of study because the hippie culture there is fascinating, freeing, and you want to understand it and write about it for future generations. Imagine, too, that you have been building virtual islands in Second Life and Open Simulator, contemporary open source virtual worlds, and see that building a virtual Harbin would be far out, and it would also allow you to do something completely new in anthropology, create a virtual field site for the study of counterculture and potentially to preserve and perpetuate the, quote, culture, unquote, culture, unquote, you find at Harbin in a completely new complementary form. And it would allow you, the listener, to visit virtual Harbin interactively. Harbin Hot Springs is an expression of a vision emerging from the 1960s and early 70s, which is actual, actualized in an ongoing way in its valley in Lake County, California, about 40 years later. So coming through the actual Harbin Gate, for some, is like coming into an altered reality, a kind of virtual world. 
The Harbin Hot Springs world is open and free and a place where people can do what they want, perhaps in contrast to what some people experience in modernity or the modern world. Harbin Hot Springs is somewhat similar to the Rainbow Gathering, uh, which also started in 1972, when two tribes, as I've heard this story, one from Northern California and the other from the Pacific Northwest, and a bunch of folks from all over, uh, the, mostly the Western US, and some from the East Coast came together in Colorado to celebrate the Rainbow Gathering, and which is met annually in national parks in the first week of July since then. Harbin Hot Springs is open all the time and is a hot springs retreat center emerging out of the human potential movement, the holistic natural movement, and universal spirituality. And while the language some use to describe Harbin may have changed a little over the decades, Harbin's countercultural, clothing optional, pool centric milieu flows along since at least the early 1970s in its present form. Some anthropologists will recognize the paragraph above as coming into conversation with Bronislav Malinowski's Argonauts of the Western Pacific, published in 1922, as well as Tom Belstorff's Coming of Age in Second Life, an anthropologist explores the virtually human, published in 2008. Both Malinowski and Belstorff, now in a virtual world, develop significant historical trajectories of inquiry and anthropological research, focusing on the importance of field work and participant observation, and emphasizing people's actual experiences with which anthropologists have reached their conclusions. Both Malinowski and Belstorff take the methods and theories of anthropology regarding actual experiences, actual belief, actual life, and apply them to writing ethnography. In this actual virtual Harbin Hot Springs ethnography, I'll engage these anthropological practices in both writing comparable ethnographies of the, virtu of the actual and the virtual in one book was my plan, but that's, uh, that knapsack got stolen with the manuscript in the first virtual Harbin. So um, it's, I have a second book planned, of which this paper uh, is parts of. And in anthropologically building a virtual Harbin, I'll explore how these information, technological, constructive practices of building an anthropological virtual field site, virtual Harbin for ethnographic study, furthers practices of constructing the actual and the virtual and of developing new forms of anthropological representation in understanding the virtual. By engaging a key anthropological form of descriptive analysis for comparison in both actual and virtual field sites, I depart from other approaches to qualitative analysis of, how, of both how Harbin Hot Springs might be considered in other academic disciplines, as well as prescriptive analysis which, any, which many other researchers of virtual worlds have engaged in. In this book, I synthesize ethnographic analysis of two comparable field sites to highlight virtuality and the possibilities and limitations of ethnographic comparison of the actual and the virtual. This actual virtual comparative approach highlights the significance of representation in understanding and characterizing ethnographically both actual residents and visitors to actual Harbin, as well as the ways in which avatars have emerged due to digital technologies to offer beginning ways to explore the virtually human. As my first line of analysis, I suggest that life for actual residents and visitors emerging from the milieu of the 1960s can be delightfully countercultural and freeing at Harbin for some, drawing on the literature of the virtual avatar life in this actual virtual Harbin context makes possible new forms of counterculture, e.g. exploration of a variety of freeing roles, the possibility to build and thus create new possibilities. 
And I also show that avatars in virtual Harbin in Second Life and Open Simulator often the po offer the possibility to explore a curiously doubly liminal space. People find freedom at actual Harbin. I therefore develop the argument that both actual Harbin and virtual Harbin open possibilities for kinds of virtual experience which in many ways are countercultural and thus make possible the exploring of avatarness and virtual freedoms in their own lives in relation to their computers as people and individuals. Thus in my analysis, actual Harbin in relation to virtual worlds and to virtual Harbin becomes more virtual than the multimedia interactive representation of Harbin for people, visitors, due to a kind of actuality of counterculture on the ground, which is kind of, a kind of virtuality more real than virtual Harbin, due to a kind of realness of counterculture. The real and the actual are more vivid instantiations of the virtual than the virtual, due to actual Harbin's nowness and oneness in the actual Harbin warm pool, for example. While the experience of the warm pool is difficult to replicate digitally, soaking in one's own bathtub from home while visiting virtual Harbin, <clears throat> multimedia-wise, especially vis-a-vis -vis clothing optionalness, will help generate an aspect of the Harbin experience. And I also characterize how counterculture emerges in relation to culture in uniquely Harbin ways, actually and virtually, where both, influence, where both influence the experience of Harbin residents and visitors. In addition, the milieu or culture of on-the-ground Harbin makes both actual and virtual Harbin counterculturally freer, a key concept here in the analysis of counterculture actually and virtually. What counterculture is me, here... Did you need to get the audiovisual? Uh, that would be super. Well, I left instructions exactly how to get it. I don't know why somebody didn't get it. Okay. Um, I told everybody. The key is still there. Do you uh, want to it up? Let's see. Um, maybe we'll finish the paper and then <laughs> do a little bit of um, multimedia um, more cyberspace on the screen uh, at the end. How does that sound? Welcome back, and uh, it sounds like you've had horrendous travel experience. <laughs> when culture, when counterculture is here, in the context of this kind of descriptive analysis, in relation to anthropological conceptions of culture, uh, what counterculture is here involves a kind of creative response of people in the 1960s to modernity, my second line of analysis. Counterculture here informs a concept of virtually human in the sense of acting out of alternative roles or identities, both actually and virtually, in response to modernity. For example, Rainbow Gathering, Burning Man, both on the ground and in world too. And rather than defining and reifying counterculture, I'll begin to characterize counterculture through the following ethnographic analysis of Harbin. But briefly, in this paper, counterculture is a progressive uh, de-reification or de-thingification of culture with orientations towards freedom, protest, resistance, and reversal vis-a-vis -vis those cultural processes influenced by modernity. Here, counterculture, more and less of the freedom-seeking movements of the 1960s, now still rippling in people's minds and practices 40 years later, emerges as very diverse creative responses to modernity. Avatars, the virtually human, in virtual Harbin are further freeing instantiations, now digitally mediated, of the freeing experiences, especially in the Harbin pools, of being at actual Harbin. So to engage the meaning of virtual as, quote, almost or end, un, end quote, vis-a-vis -vis Bellstorff, I'd like to suggest that modernity throws off the balance 
of a kind of humanity, and that both actual Harbin and virtual Harbin make it possible to consider anew and reconfigure the virtual through placemaking, subjectivity, and community, almost. Anthropology as, quote, a positive and definite study of human knowledge of the human, to cite Belstorff, can help reveal the layers of contingency within the category of the virtually human, rather than exiling such contingency into a category of the post-human and therefore retrenching the borders of the human itself." End quote from Belster. It's through the ethnographic study and comparison of actual and virtual Harbin that I engage ethnographic methods, participant observation through fieldwork, and write a text, an, an ethnography, and create a virtual Harbin. To elucidate these two lines of analysis concerning counterculture and freedom, both kinds of virtuality. The ethnography of my actual and virtual field sites of Harbin Hot Springs is itself a methodological experiment due to Harbin's unique pool area and its emergence from the human potential movement, the holistic natural movement and universal spirituality and the 1960s and what has taken shape there on the ground over the past six, 40 years. Since field work of water vis-a-vis -vis counterculture is relatively unexplored. Building on a century of ethnographic field work and a large body of research about the virtual, I suggest that ethnography as method reveals much about counterculture at Harbin actually and virtually. I trace a trajectory from the virtual from within the practice of ethnography itself, where Malinowski's, quote, imagine yourself, dot, 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 end quote, in a new place, such as the Trobriand Islands in Oceania, and Geertz's emphasis on understanding the native's point of view. Yeah, that was Malinowski. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Nelson. Uh, both of which suggest similar kinds of virtuality to, experience, to the experience of being in the baths at Harbin Hot Springs, then to the idea of a virtual avatar visiting virtual Harbin, and indeed of multimedia itself. So all are virtual. That avatars may converge in new ways with hippies soaking in Harbin's warm pool vis-a-vis -vis avatar computer scripts and programming is a fascinating process to examine ethnographically. And while not within the scope of my actual virtual Harbin ethnography, I take this a step further to, to suggest that this is part of symbolizing which we human primates engage in, reflecting too, for example, the understanding of ideas that Plato proposed in his cave allegory, as well as Aristotle's quote, saying something about something, end quote. Representing both actual and virtual Harbins ethnographically is to explicitly examine the virtual anthropologically and is the methodological experiment I engage in. I draw richly from the history of ethnography and the questions addressed therein for this book because it's this century-old body of narratives, methods, questions, research, and writings which allows me to understand uniquely what is so fascinating about Harbin, as well as plan for, inform, and build a virtual Harbin for actual virtual anthropological comparison. I also draw on long critiques of ethnographic method to highlight alternative possibilities. So anthropologists have historically looked at and gone to the field, a specific physical site that has traditionally been geographically bounded. The actual Harbin Hot Springs Retreat Center is unusual as an anthropological field site in its remarkable boundedness in a valley at the end of a road in Northern California. But the experiences there are unbounded. And the actual virtual construction of a har virtual Harbin will further stretch the anthropological analysis of multi-sidedness 
of the anthropological field of anthropological field sites in a globalized world, especially in relation to Harbin on the ground and in its pools. Virtual Harbin, open to people from around the world, will internalize actual Harbin, which already draws people from all over the world in novel and fascinating ways. It also may lead to a kind of appropriate use of actual Harbin, which is already close to being overloaded, overbooked, uh, per Ishvara, the, who is the founder who still lives on property, who bought the property in 1972, a.k.a. Uh, Bob Hartley. Virtual Harbin will thus extend actual Harbin's emergent place-based cultural processes in unanticipated ways as an ongoing ethnographic methodological exploration. So in this next section, I want to give a, a little bit of a sense of everyday actual and virtual Harbin through a kind of narrative that touches a little bit on the erotic and um, sort of uh, mixes both worlds. I arrived early in the afternoon, checked in at the Harbin gate, and drove up a half mile to the meadow area and camped on a platform over the bank of a road in the secluded pretty oak forest, which I didn't know about for around the first 10 years of my visiting Harbin. At the gate, I noticed on a Harbin sign a free workshop called A Journey in Timeless Loving with Steve Carter. It's also described as an introduction to Tantra. I headed to the pool area, which is the main area of Harbin, walking through the woods along the village path. Harbin's unique milieu emerges in the beauty of its valley and nature, as well as in combination with the option not to wear clothes, especially in the pool area, but all over the Harbin property. People generally have quiet minds around the pools, where life is relaxed and easy. I put my bag down on the sun deck, Took, take off my clothes, shower, and head into the warm pool. A man comes to Harbin to take a watsu, which is water shiatsu. One person cradles another and draws them through the water. Uh, often at Harbin, both are naked, and it's very nurturing and healing in a variety of ways. A woman arrives at Harbin to participate in the fourth level of the Human Awareness Institute's Love, Intimacy, and Sexuality workshops. Someone comes to Harbin, shares Harbin's vision, and starts the Harbin food market. A woman comes to Harbin for drumming in the evening. A group of friends come to explore contact improv dance in the heart-shaped pool. One resident cleans the warm pool and the other pools a few days a week for some years, and another runs the Harbin warehouse, where the auto shop and the human computer and the Harbin computer offices are. Kind of as acts of service, Harbin's a church, Heart Consciousness Church, two churches. Became Heart Consciousness Church in 1975, maybe as a hippie tax dodge, uh, but it definitely has some communality of a church. And then in 1996, it became a second church, New Age Church of Being, uh, which ordains ministers. But this is all very low-key in a kind of maybe even irreverent hippie way. Many of these people who come to Harbin and stay today as well find freedom in a kind of alternative hippie way of life here. So virtual Harbin. Find yourself in your bathtub at home, perhaps with lots of plants around you, and teleport yourself into virtual Harbin in Second Life. So who's, who's been here? And who's seen Second Life in maybe uh, television or even explored it? It's a free software application. I know you have Nelson. No one here. I've been so long. It seems like okay. <laughs> well, um, we'll go to there. We'll go to this afterward. Um, So find yourself in your bathtub at home, uh, perhaps with lots of plants around you, and teleport yourself into virtual Harbin. You're at your computer. Or perhaps you're wearing kind of Harbin bubble glasses, where you can see a virtual world inside, which allows you to experience virtual Harbin there, 
and which don't yet exist, although Google Glasses are out. Um, but check out the water on this Galaxy 3 smartphone. So I'll show this afterward, but there's a very fluid interface. So Second Life and Open Simulator are kind of cartoon-esque. And this um, Samsung Galaxy 3 smartphone, I'll just run my thumb over it, and it's very ripply and very realistic. Um, I'll do it again in a second. It's hard to see. I could potentially show it up here. But um, virtu virtuality in this kind of expression is getting better. Um, just once for the screen. Um, so there's, it's a remarkable instantiation of kind of water in digital technologies. And you could imagine wearing a pair of glasses like this, right? Um, so, <laughs> the, it's exciting. Or the, we'll get to you know the cartoonesque versus um, interactive uh, virt sort of movie realism is a fascinating question. Um, already, films can be pretty compelling, right? You can be drawn into this very realistic world of a film, um, all, all, as if you would go there, for example. Kind of a suspension of disbelief. Um, you have already gotten a free avatar and learned how to find your way around the free second life. You've added clothes to your avatar and changed the appearance of your free second life avatar. And this little 4.5 inch animated figure which represents you and with which you'll interact with other avatars and, the, and their end users from all over the world and through which you may start to build things into a representation of whomever you want. Um, so you can change your avatar any way you want and you'll interact in this virtual space. From the comfort of your bathtub filled with warm water, you'll find yourself on a new virtual island, which is Virtual Harbin, which a lot of different people have built together to resemble the actual Harbin Hot Springs in Northern California. So one great thing about Open Simulator and Second Life is we can all build it out of geometric shapes. Uh, community building. And these geometric shapes turn into houses and grass and fluid things like hair and fluid things like water. Still cartoon-esque. The warmth of the water helps facilitate, of the bathtub, helps facilitate the relaxation response. And also, importantly, allows you to experience fully immersive touch in this imaginary virtual experience. You're in your bathtub, you're completely surrounded by warm water, so touch is a key part of this, which in most virtual worlds, touch isn't. You're just engaging with uh, representation or images. And perhaps you as visitor in to this virtual Harbin as an ethnographic field site will help further construct this unfolding virtual Harbin if we can all easily build it as it's possible to do in Second Life and Open Simulator. With your computer and the Second Life program, you log in and begin to explore virtual Harbin. You check in in the Harbin gate in midweek and pay the $30 now. Just went up Memorial Day. Lind Oh, <laughs> Linden, Linden dollars, Second Life has a currency with a, trans, with a um, exchange rate with uh, US dollars um, called Linden dollars. Um, Linden dollars here, uh, which when I was writing this was about uh, 1 250th the value of a US dollar. And uh, you also would pay the $30 annual membership fee to join Heart Consciousness Church. Everyone has to become a member or a $10 uh, monthly fee, uh, a membership which one person in your Harbin party has to have. You may, head, you may head straight to the virtual Harbin pool area, or first head to the Harbin restaurant or Harbin market for some food, or to get a necklace, earplugs for Watsu, or a Kirtan CD. Kirtan is a form of Indian music, which is sung at uh, Harbin a fair amount. If you are studying in a virtual Harbin, if you are staying in a virtual Harbin room overnight, instead of checking in uh, at the Harbin gate, you head up or fly, avatars in Second Life and Open Simulator can fly, to the Harbin main office, which is just a quarter of a mile up the road, a third of a mile up the road. Uh, if it's before 6 p.m. Second Life time, 
and check in there. So our, uh, Second Life has its own time, and it's, it's California time, West Coast time. Instead of buying things at the virtual Harbin market, you may start to make some of these goods after you learn to build at virtual Harbin. You share some, you store some of these items in your inventory in Second Life, a permanent virtual uh, collection of items, note cards, landmarks, and things you can acquire in this virtual world. Heading directly to the pool area, you add a little warm water to your actual bathtub in your, room, in your home and take off your virtual clothes in the virtual Harbin dressing room. There are five other avatars doing this in the changing room too. Store the clothes in the cubby, in the virtual cubbies over there, cubby holes, and head into the virtual Harbin warm pool. You type, chat a quick hello to them, to these other avatars in the changing room and the warm pool. And an avatar chats hi in return. Excited by the prospect of the virtual warm water and the relaxation response there, your naked avatar enters the virtual warm pool and settles into the warm water with many other naked avatars. The water is virtually surrounding you, both act and actually as well. You add a little more warm water to your home bath for the warmth and relax into soaking. There's a sign in the actual Harbin warm pool these days stating that conversation isn't allowed. No such sign existed and people spoke fairly free, freely yet quietly in the warm pool in the mid 1990s when I first started going to Harbin. But couples in virtual Harbin warm pool, in the virtual Harbin warm pool cuddle just as they continue to do in actual Harbin. The cuddling isn't sexuality, per this sign, which says no sexuality, conversation and no sexuality allowed. Due to these virtual world information technologies in Second Life, you can type chat in private with each other, the other avatars, who may be anywhere in the, in, uh, the actual world. You could be, someone could be in Japan, and their avatar could be in this virtual har Harbin warm pool. I could be here in the Gifford room at UC Berkeley in the anthropology department and show you how we would be in the virtual Harbin uh, warm pool up here. Is this such a thing as lingo speak? Uh, there's certainly lingo speak in... in everybody can, all avatars can understand each other? Uh, there's some, there, two or three years ago there were some early translators. Um, so uh, there are many, uh, it's multilingual and people do use their native language uh, often related to... It's remarkable. <laughs> so Second Life is also an open simulator or a series of virtual islands, um, 512 by 12, 512 meters squared, and just tons of them. And they kind of create um, a, a connection. That you can teleport from one island to another island, and um, people are from all over the world visiting these islands. Other avatars can't then see you communicating uh, when you're in this private type chat. Um, even as you continue to chat with a group of avatars on your local island in local chat. So you can type privately and you can chat publicly on the island. To do this, you click on the avatar near you on your virtual island and select instant message, I am, which brings up um, a one-to-one -one chat dialog box. Or if you see that your avatar friends are online on a different virtual island, you click on their name and select instant message and then can communicate privately with them, different island to different island. So the sign in the actual Harbin warm pool, which is replicated in, virtual, in this virtual Harbin, this imaginary virtual Harbin at present, uh, says meditation zone, no conversation or sexuality allowed. Even as naked couples cuddle, hetero and same sex, and people occasionally whisper these days. Uh, but if you wanted to cuddle at home in your bathtub with, a, with an actual friend, uh, your basin would, of course, have to be big enough to hold both of you. <laughs> in your uh, own bathtub at home, you begin to release deeper into the relaxation response. And with dry hands or with your glasses, your avatar walks out of the warm pool in virtual Harbin. 
uh, deciding not to go into the virtual Harbin hot or cold pool, and walks over to the virtual Harbin sun deck instead. There are around 20 naked avatars here on the sun deck, some whom are reading, while others are lying on the deck, bathing under the virtual Harbin sun. Mostly, Harbin residents have made actual Harbin in Second Life in this scenario, where individuals and their avatars can build from these geometric shapes, changing their dimensions and shapes, and adding uh, texture and fluidness, for example. And then they can keep these builds in their inventory as well. And the actual Harbin sun deck, in the warm part of the year, when people are hanging out up north, two and a half hours away, uh, reminds me a little bit of primates hanging out, other primates, non-human primates. Uh, for example, um, common chimps or bonobo chimps in a forest resting together in a group in the sun. The immersive representational experience of being at virtual Harbin and its effects symbolically combine with the neurophysiological effects of being in the warm water at home to create a very enjoyable experience. You begin to talk with an attractive female avatar, male avatar you meet on the sun deck in Virtual Harbin. After talking with your new avatar friend on the Virtual Harbin sun deck, switching between both voice, so you can talk in voice out loud, and text chat, type chat, you decide to go, you decide to go look at the Virtual Harbin temple. So you click the fly button on your Second Life screen interface, fly up, using your arrow keys to aim for the heart-shaped pool just 30 meters away, and soar out over the Harbin main side area. Flying over the red roofs of the virtual Harbin guest buildings, over the main stone front lodge, and over the garden to the straw bale, the cob and bale, temple, which is something very much out of the 60s. It was kind of an efficient way to build using just uh, clay and straw. It's a little bit of a masterpiece, um, which was uh, spearheaded and built in 2005 at the actual Harbin by Sunray. And uh, in 2013, perhaps next year, by Harbin residents in the virtual Harbin in a virtual world. So the virtual Harbin temple isn't made yet. You fly down to the virtual Harbin temple with your new avatar friend where you land with a splat. Avatars <laughs> land roughly in Second Life. Due to the Second Life scripting of avatar landing when you press the no fly button on this beautiful cob and hay bale temple structure, the roof of which looks like an old straw hat with cupola and crenola, decorative elements at the top of the roof above the cupola. Your avatars jump from the roof to the ground in front of one of the two main entrances, and you both enter the rose-colored, swirly stucco building with the peaked spiral wood roof dome, which looks like it has Native American influences. The skylight at the top makes the light inside soft, yet not too bright. The three avatars who are practicing yoga with each other in the temple all live in the actual Harbin and in Middletown, California. Both you and your avatar friend join the virtual yoga practice. You live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you don't know yet where your virtual avatar friend is from although her profile allows her to state something about what she does in first life, so-called real life, or RL, as many SL people say. She has only noted her second life interests. Since you are within a 30 second life meter radius of each other, all of you click and lock on your sound so you can speak freely and don't have to type which allows you to draw a whole range of avatar yoga pose move positions from your inventory. So you are speaking with each other, you go to your inventory and you say lotus pose and you draw over this icon and put it on yourself and your avatar goes into lotus pose. That's sort of how Second Life works. 
as well as um, allow you to script new related movements. Some of you explore these movements in your own real-life body minds at home, in front of your computers. As you watch what your new yoga avatar friends are doing with yoga in the virtual Harbin Temple, they too are watching and learning virtual yoga from you in a kind of improvis improvisational yoga sharing. One of them mentions that someone is doing yoga contact watsu up at the virtual Harbin domes. Harbin is, has invented many interesting practices with interesting language for it. You and your friend walk out of the other door of the temple and fly northeast over the Harbin garden across the Harbin Creek, uh, which becomes a stream in winter, and head for the domes some distance away. The main side area of Harbin with the pool area, Stonefront Lodge, the guest buildings are on one side of this valley, Harbin Domes and the conference center are across the creek on the other side of this valley at actual Harbin. Om Shanti Padma Om. How you doing? Someone in the, Har in the virtual Harbin Domes pool area asks after you land near the new Harbin solar panels grid, which is also becoming virtual uh, uh, car ports at the same time and walk through the Harbin Dome's bubble portal into this fascinating building which looks like bubbles. And one can only imagine that it, it was imagined architecturally when someone might have been on LSD or something. It's, it's definitely a, a, a unique place um, and interesting that Harbin would have put probably hundreds of thousands of dollars into it and um, built what looks like from the main side area, these bubbles, these bubble buildings, five or so up on the hillside on the other side of the valley. Uh, from across the valley in the main side pool area, the domes look evocative and intriguing. The actual Harbin dome pools aren't geothermally heated as the Harbin warm pools are. Uh, so these solar panels will have um, uh, only a very little uh, help to um, offset the heating costs. Harbin's hippie new age thinking emerging with the 60s and 70s also naturally includes still today many echoes of practices originally from India, uh, from other Buddhist lands, from all over the world. The 60s was very syncretic in the practices it drew from, uh, quite remarkably so. And it, on this very campus, um, Nelson came here in 64, were probably some of the most colorful sort of explorations around. Maybe Larry's been here for a long time too, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Your avatar friend, and uh, you say namaste, sort of the light within me salutes the light within you, and begin to chat about the virtual Watsu class taking place in the lower pool area before heading into the upper pool area with virtual bathing suits on. The actual main side pool area is clothing optional and most people at Har actual Harbin go into the pools naked, whereas the actual dome pools are a watsu school, water shiatsu school, this kind of practice which starts at Harbin uh, in many ways, with also guest accommodation, so there are rooms you can book, uh, watsu, which stands for wat water shiatsu, is a form of water movement originating at Harbin. Since many people who may come to the watsu school aren't necessarily interested in clothing optionalness, and because the actual Harbin domes were built with a watsu school in mind, wearing bathing suits are the norm. Watsu itself was started in the Harbin warm pool, clothing optionally, perhaps in the mid-70s, just by starting to float people. And as a way to meet, uh, you offer to give your new avatar friend a Watsu in the upper Harbin Dome pool. She accepts, and you tell her a little about what will happen in the Watsu, using the voice option in Second Life. You encourage her to relax completely in the warm water, and that with your support, <coughs> she'll be able to float freely and easily. You explain how you'll draw her through the water, first from her head and shoulders, exploring ease of movement in a kind of watery dance. 
first supporting her whole body from her neck, head and shoulders, in the crook of your arm. She said she's seen a little Watsu. You ask her to please say something if she ever feels uncomfortable or if she knows what will feel better if she, uh, or more freeing. You mention how you'll focus on her breath and that when, after some sessions, you begin to explore more elaborate movement, for example, water spirals and somersaults, you'll synchronize your movement with her breathing. Facing one another and holding each other's hands and looking into one another's eyes, you begin to explore breathing movement together, virtually where, with each exhale, both of you descend in the water naturally. And on the inhale, you both flee, freely rise at the same time. You both smile as you explore how this simple movement together in virtual warm water is, centering, is centering and liberating together. You tell her you'll first just float her avatar. You draw her toward you, cradling her head in the crook of your arm. As you begin to draw her through the water, you observe how relaxed she is in the warm water and how beautiful and also where she is tense, unrelaxed, or not comfortable. She's smiling and at ease with her eyes shut, happy like a baby. After just a few minutes of virtual floating, your new avatar friend says she wants earplugs, virtual earplugs, because in real life, water in her ears is a problem. You tell her that there are earplugs available in the virtual Harbin market across the valley in Stonefront Lodge in the main side area and ask her if she'd like to fly there before proceeding with her virtual Watsu. You add her as a Second Life friend. So when you add each other as friends, then you can see when each other is in the virtual world at the same time, even if you're on different islands. And she accepts so that you'll be able to see one another when both online, in case you get separated when flying to the market. She says yes, partly because she's interested in becoming, with all, in becoming familiar with all of virtual Harbin. And from the middle of the Harbin Dome's upper pool, in the middle of the Watsu, you both fly up, not naked. And she follows you across the valley through the virtual air to the waterway sculpture path between Stonefront Lodge and the Azalea guest rooms where you both land unceremoniously with a splat among the trees there. You walk down the winding path and enter the market, find the earplugs, and you pay Lyndon dollars at the cash register, since she doesn't have any yet. To purchase Lyndon dollars, you enter your actual credit card number in a Lyndon Lab Second Life webpage, and in exchange, Lyndon dollars are put into your Second Life account. With these virtual dollars, you can purchase Second Life builds and creations, which residents build, including, for example, clothes and fashions, real estate, virtual islands, houses, and art. After getting her earplugs, you fly back to the virtual Harbin Dome's upper pool to continue the water shiatsu, back in the virtual water with Rose rising which is her avatar name, things seem more harmonious after the earplugs. As Rose's Watsu continues, the virtual setting sun begins to peek through the teepee's door, which is over the virtual Harbin Dome's upper pool, just as two other avatars come into the pool, upper pool for a scheduled Watsu class as part of the Watsu school at the Harbin Dome's school of shiatsu and massage. So Rose and I stop the Watsu. One of these new avatars comes from Japan, both in Second Life and in real life as non-Second Life, as is called by uh, avatars. And she is actually in Japan as her avatar enters the pool. She has also visited actual Harbin on the ground. The other avatar is actually a Harbin Watsu teacher who lives mostly in Santa Cruz, California, down south but returns to Harbin to teach week-long week virtual and actual Watsu workshops. She's at actual Harbin to teach Watsu for this virtual workshop. Not knowing about this class, we open the map of virtual Harbin by clicking on the mini-map button in the toolbar at the bottom, 
and look for which pools at Harbin have no avatars. Just 20 meters away, there are some green dots in the lower pool at the Harbin domes. So you'll see there's a mini map in the, in the Second Life interface, and the green dots indicate there are other avatars on this 512 meter, 5512 five, Second Life meter island. Um, the, these islands can be joined to make bigger space. Um, there aren't, uh, however, any green dots representing avatars in the pools outside of the Harbin Conference Center, 300 meters to the east. Uh, and, I've read on, and I've read on the actual Harbin virtual uh, Harbin schedules that there is an unconditional dance tonight. As so Rose and I fly off toward the conference center, another main building area at Harbin, which Harbin built in 19, around 1980, with also non-geothermally heated pools outside of it. On the way, as we instant message between each other while flying, we decide to veer off up the side of the Dragon Ridge Mountain on the south side of the Harbin Valley, which is so beautiful when seen from the Harbin Warm Pool. We kind of zoom, fly up the hill from the Harbin Domes, because we want to peek over. I've actually never, I've tried once, but never been able to scramble up this very steep, sheer sort of bank um, to get a look at um, this open Lake County area in actual life. Um, Second Life would make it possible. Um, so in the local communication type chat area, which many avatars can see through Second Life's interface, which uh, I ask how she's doing, how is Rose doing? She types fine. I type flying is great in Second Life. And as she looks south, she types beautiful view. She has a white dot indicating that her computer hardware, in conjunction with the Second Life application, can use its real-time voice capabilities. So if your avatar has a white dot above it, you can, you can use voice. And I type to ask if she would like to use the voice option, uh, not knowing whether she has turned this on in Second Life or whether her computer speakers are turned on. She types OK, and I ask her, using voice, how the weather is in her actual location. She replies that it's warm and lovely here. I say the weather is bright and beautiful where I am too. The third way we communicate is through a kind of type chat in the Second Life communication dialog box, but one-to-one -one using instant message as a kind of private channel. While looking out over this open, virtual, still quite wild and native Northern California landscape from the top of Dragon Ridge on our different computer screens, I explained to Rose how to use the virtual mini-maps in Second Life with its nearly 120,000 simulations, builds, or virtual islands, and a little about it. She tells me she's opened it. I point out where we are and virtual Harbin Hot Springs is and how the green and yellow dots represent her and my avatars. I, I explain how the one-third of a circle radius around each of our avatars dots on the maps represents what we can see and which way each of our avatars is facing. You suggest to Rose that she search on Akapi Island, O-K-A-P-I, Akapi Island, and it has an HTTP address, only called a Second Life URL. Uh, or that Rose search on Chadalhuyuk, Turkey, in the search box in Second Life. Ruth Tringham is an anthropology professor, archaeology professor here. She made a virtual Chadalhuyuk, a 9,000-year-old site in the center of Turkey, um, as a kind of exploration of Second Life and virtual for virtual archaeology, um, which was developed. Uh, let's see. You mentioned the teleport button in voice to Rose, and she clicks it. I press the teleport button as well, and a few seconds later, our avatars arrive on UC Berkeley's virtual archaeological field site, which was developed academically to examine ways in which virtual worlds and archaeology intersect. There are a few green dots in the center of the mini-map. Together, you fly over the reconstruction of the uninhabited ancient village and land on a roof. The entrance to an underground room is in what could be an adobe Native American building complex, 
but this second life architectural build is modeled after ancient buildings in what now is actual Turkey. You, you and Rose go down and through the clear stories on two sides, the light illuminates what was an ancient living space. To show Rose one more island simulation, you suggest she search on Sea Turtle Island, on which Music Island and an unprogrammed Quaker meeting house, among other places, exist. She does this, and you both travel there together. You land among trees, with ocean waves falling upon the shore not too far away. Each of these island simulations were jointly built by numerous individuals interested in constructing virtual objects in Second Life and representing aspects of actual life. You teleport back to the Dragon Ridge on Virtual Harbin's Island and you talk as you gaze out over the ridge. Still interested in doing a virtual Watsu together and with virtual sunset coming on, Rose and I fly east to the Virtual Harbin Conference Center pools where I've rarely seen people in the waters. So we're going from the domes to the conference center in the main side area with the main pool areas over on the other side of the valley, both virtual and actual. And which, like the Harbin pool, domes pools, are not, hosted by, are not heated by geothermally heat warm water. Our avatars land near the Harbin Conference Center's main entrance where there are also a number of pools at different levels at around 7 in the evening. Second Lifetime pools at, uh, Second Lifetime corresponds currently with Pacific Time in California, for example, from which place the program and virtual world of Second Life also emerged. And a Harbin Unconditional Dance in the Harbin Conference Center occurs these days in real life as well as virtually on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. So after the Watsu, we decide we would go to the dance. No one is around under the trees uh, near the secluded um, virtual Harbin con Conference Center where the dances are often held. So we enter the water of the uppermost pool, this time naked. We begin uh, facing each other and I take her virtual wrists and as we relax into the water, we begin to synchronize our breaths and let ourselves descend a little with our exhales and rise naturally and virtually with our inhales. Ease grows on our faces and our eyes soften. I draw her head and bo upper body into the crook of my arm and begin to float her, allowing her body and legs to trail through the water. As I begin to give her a watsu, as I begin to give her a watsu, as she receives this and releases, a faint smile grows over her face. Time passes quickly, and I notice on the mini-map two avatars appearing, walking across the bridge, the actual bridge, the virtual bridge to the conference center. So I draw Rose to the wall of the pool, rest the back of her head there, and then press her belly into the inn to bring her virtual sacrum to the warm, to the pool's edge underwater. Totally relaxed and happy with her feet on the bottom of the pool, she opens her eyes and slowly begins to emerge from the freedom of the Watsu. We thank each other and I mentioned that people are beginning to arrive for the dance. So we get out of the pool and put on our clothes and walk into the conference center. So that's a little narrative of how avatars and uh, might engage a virtual Harbin. Uh, so the last section of the paper, um, or the last section before the conclusion, uh, the virtual. Do you need the white um, Sure. Yes. So extending the concept of the virtual. The concept and experience of community itself at Harbin is virtual in two ways here. By community here, I mean a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attributes, interests, and goals, a, similar or a similarity or identity, joint ownership even, or liability. So in addition to building virtual Harbin in Second Life as ethnographic field site for participant observation study of the Harbin community which emerges there, 
possibly around Harbin New Age practices like Watsu, community as a concept here has a virtual aspect as well. Virtual as something not physically existing, but created by software to appear to do so, as we've talked about before. For me, it's like community and milieu at Harbin where the software as metaphor is the countercultural influences of the 1960s that create very fascinating appearances at Harbin. It's clothing optionalness, color, colorful, hip, creative hippie clothing from all over the world, but also unique kinds of serendipity and synchronicity. Uh, Harbin manifests things in interesting ways. Uh, it's just an interesting way per perceptually. Uh, maybe because of the clothing optional pool area in the warm pool. Um, it's just an interesting phenomenon I've noticed. Anthropological interest in community at Harbin for me also relates to expressions of communitas. This is Victor Turner and others' conception of uh, betwixt and between togetherness or kind of an unstructured uh, harmony um, emergent um, within a community. Uh, where the pools in the pool area, in particular, within the milieu of Harbin as a whole, seem to create in their own kind, uh, a kind of easygoing light, hippie lifestyle. As an ethnographer, I'm personally exploring questions of hippie, hippie communitas as a kind of virtuality at Harbin. Uh, so I'm just going to touch a little bit on Dean McCannell's um, Virtual Realities Place paper which he um, published in 1999. Uh, while Dean McCannell's paper, Virtual Realities Place, published in 1999, juxtaposes the tourism industry with Hollywood's movie industry, significantly playing down, even panning, the role of and potential for virtual reality vis-a-vis -vis tourism. Uh, he says that virtual reality is the logical next step beyond tourism and the movies, this is quote. Uh, it begins between tourism and movies, borrowing from each of these earlier forms their conventions of realism and their ways of displacing desire. Uh, this paper is about different ways of constructing the scenes of human experience, focusing on some recent efforts to totalize the background of human action in computer simulations. In the nexus of sightseeing, this is still Dean, and virtual travel, the status of place has been made highly ambiguous by the construction of virtual places, both outside, for example, uh, post in a postmodern way, New York and Las Vegas, and inside the computer. In its concluding sections, uh, this paper will suggest a different approach to the construction of place, and experience as an alternative to the models proffered by builders of computer-based and theme park virtual environments. So um, what I'd like to suggest is that interactive movie realistic virtual world Harbin, so if you could take Second Life, which we'll see at the end of this, and make all those avatars and interactivity um, Quite Alive is the most vivid movies you've seen. Uh, and I was at the MIT Media Lab back in January, and on this 16-panel, 60-inch Samsung screens, an immense sort of format of screens, there was World of Warcraft. And you had these avatars from World of Warcraft that were maybe 10 feet high, all of which could become remarkable instructors in classrooms or avatars for Watsu. Um, still cartoon-esque, but very vivid and uh, very uh, larger than life. I'd like to suggest that an interactive movie realistic virtual world Harbin, whether on a screen or in Harbin bubble glasses, while visiting Harbin from your bathtub, for example, for both a touch experience vis-a-vis -vis the warm water, as well as for the relaxation response, as a kind of biological meditation even, is an expression of internetity, so the information age, and also for the touristic imaginaire, imagination, distinct from 
interpretations of tourism contextualized in terms of modernity, postmodernity, or advertising discourse. In building on Dean McCannell's interpretations of modernity in his wonderful and defining book, The Tourist, and of postmodernity in his paper, uh, Virtual Reality's Place, in my reading of it, where psychoanalytic interpretations play a role, a significant role in his interpretations, I want to complement such modalities of interpretation and his analyses with this one in the context of the information age, information technologies, and internetity. Here, vis-a-vis -vis my Harbin ethnographic work, desire, which plays a role in Dean's interpretations and is definitely a psychoanalytic um, and drives as well sort of modus operandi or driving force, um, important concepts in Dean's writings, has found a new cult countercultural form in the on-the-ground milieu at Harbin, vis-a-vis -vis its warm pool, clothing optionals, and its pool area. Here, virtual world Harbin visitors and online tourists' experiences of place will become more realistic as well as authentic in terms of the touristic imagination and vis-a-vis -vis representation, especially in multimedia. So in the last paragraph of his paper, Virtual Reality's Place, Dean asks, in the context of an analysis of the role of art vis-a-vis -vis virtual reality, quote, can we desire otherness as real, the real of nature, for example, without also desiring to incorporate it, program it, metabolize it, make it not other but a part of ourselves, nothing beyond our symbol or fantasy of it. According to some forms of contemporary art, so this, that was his question, um, yes we can. According to the drive behind uh, the construction of virtual experiences so far, no we cannot. Virtual reality is the death drive as entertainment, Dean McCannell concludes in his virtual realities paper. So, death drive, common chimpanzees, life jive, hippies, Harbin, uh, clothing optionalists, um, psychoanalytic theory has its, Thanatos has its limitations, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, the making of virtual Harbin as ethnographic field site, and I can show you the URL to a 14 minute little machinima I made, um, sort of going to an island in Second Life called the Gardens of Bliss, a build that's now down, um, and showing how it could be a very interesting virtual field site, um, quite a beautiful build. Um, the making of Virtual Harbin as ethnographic field site, the title of this little 14-minute machinima, and potentially by all and any of us where we could all build it, or any of our field sites, for a comparative study, an increasingly movie realistic interactivity over time will allow us to pursue an unfolding uh, exploration of these questions in the context of tourism in terms of modernity, postmodernity, advertising discourse, as well as the information age. The virtual and erotic, as focuses of inquiry in terms of the touristic imagination, will develop in new ways from the desire to learn and know and visit as tourists. To conclude, in this paper, I presented an ethnographic interpretation of Harbin Hot Springs in terms of the virtual as well as the erotic, the context of the information age, and in terms of an actual place. By coming into a conversation with two approaches in tourism studies to examining the virtual and the implications of the internet for this field, both Dean McCannell's analysis in his paper, Virtual Reality's Place, as well as my own paper I wrote in Professor Nelson Grayburn's class in 2001, Gazing at the Box Tourism in the Context of the Internet and Globalization, Internetity, I suggested here that the making of a virtual Harbin as ethnographic field site opens touristic studies horizons for ongoing study of questions of the erotic and the touristic imagination in terms of these four discourses. 
In my talk here, virtuality referred to something not physically existing, but created by software to appear to do so. So multimedia, yes, but also metaphorically and symbolically, and which I think will become increasingly symbolically sophisticated and move toward interactive film realism is one expression. And this paper, as well as what has occurred, occurs in people's body minds, thus in our imaginations. So virtuality is a big concept. And by contrasting the actual with the virtual, through proposing the making of a virtual Harbin in a virtual world as ethnographic field site for a comparison with the actual, I suggested that we can engage participant observation as field method pool play in a novel and emergent approach in anthropology. Pool play as a new form of ethnographic field work, thanks to the Harbin pools, is perhaps significant in all four discourses of modernity, postmodernity, advertising discourse, as well as what I'm calling internetity, as kinds of conditions that have informed interpretive approaches in tourism studies. Because in a kind of, in a, in a kind of, because of, of sort of counterculture, in a kind of counterculture way, Ethnographic playing in waters to do anthropology builds on a long different tradition. And Hippie Harbin helps to extend both the terms field and work anthropologically. Hippies question the idea of work and perhaps we should question the idea of field um, in terms of the anthropological tradition and uh, extend it to the warm pool uh, in a very kind of alternative way of thinking. By contrasting the term techne, roughly as making things with technology, which centrally informs Tom Bellstorff's argument in his coming of age of second life and anthropologist explores the virtually human, with the term information, which is central to my concept of the virtual in my upcoming book, I want to bricolage or bring together the concepts of virtuality, milieu, fluid code, imaginaire, uh, in terms of an ethnographic reading of Harbin's warm pool and farmed counterculture as kinds of information, culture, in contrast to the actual or physical or biological. My conclusion in this talk, ethnographically informed via fieldwork, which I'm exploring anew in terms of pool play vis-a-vis -vis the significant harm war, har Harbin warm pool, is that the serene Harbin Hot Springs warm pool, along with the clothing optional pool area as a whole, uh, gives rise to the relaxation response meditation. Plenty of naked soaking and cuddling over decades, and a 1960s informed alternative milieu influencing sociality, and a kind of biological harmony, communitas, and oneness. So in that harmony biologically mediated, in that biologically mediated oneness, communitas, hippies together, soaking, cuddling in the warm pool, you have something new relative to these three discourses and interpretations of, at least four discourses and interpretations of them. All of which are an unique to Harbin virtual experience in which can be ethnographically examined in a virtual world Harbin in numerous unfolding ways. Residents and visitors to Harbin, each as kinds of hippie informed tourists, engage this erotic, Harbin experience in unfolding ways in life of Harbin, in the life of Harbin, and this clothing optional uh, warm water informed culture, which is central to Harbin. So obviously I give you one perspective, but out of all this nakedness and soaking and cuddling and hippie ethos, a lot goes on otherwise at Harbin uh, in very interesting ways, very colorful ways. So there's a generation of alternative culture emerging out of the Harbin pools in terms of tourism and for tourists and for the touristic imagination which began in the 60s and seems to be continuing into the future. Eroticism is an expression of this Harbin virtuality vis-a-vis -vis representation, uh, but touch is part of this eroticism vis-a-vis -vis both the cuddling and warm water at actual Harbin and the warm water at home in one's bath in a potential virtual Harbin vis-a-vis -vis this anthropology of, the hard, of Harbin, the Harbin pools, and its pool area. Thank you.
thank you for what must have been a lot of hard work to think that and keep it straight. Nice to have uh, eight out of nine chapters completed uh, for this book to draw from. Yeah. So um, still a few yeah. more to go. And then a second Would book. Would you like to do something visual? Or uh, let's see. Maybe we can set this up and then do a question and answer with this uh, visual. How does that sound? Okay. Try to keep it brief. Too. I don't know if we can get to work, but this is something. Great. So, yeah. Um, is this already open? I have I have a dongle and I have um, okay. and I think it should all just be working on the thing. Let's see, I think. We're kind of all pretty much connected. Okay. Um, so, how do you turn the speed off? Well, I turned it off. Okay, yeah, it's green. It's flashing red. So, so we can take a break and have a thing. You you gave us so much to well, think it. about. Um, it's so synthetic. Oh, it's such a bricolage, but I want to get you about that in relation to art, science, and anthropology. Mm -hmm. But it's really very uh, engaging. And um, oh gosh, I don't want to. So we have light. We have projector okay. light. Well, figure it out, and uh, then maybe we can turn this down again. Sounds great. We'll take our time. Yeah, that was uh, you put a lot of pressure. But. I just got to have a bit in there. In, in, in London, you know this. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to make your flux fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know that to be the Get down in a nice small pool. Just say earplugs. So just yeah. go ahead. My big question uh -huh. is imagine, imagine having the computer. <laughs> you have to have a maritime computer, you know, and um, you, you would have to set it up carefully, obviously. Oh. Good question. Uh, so this is um, the pool area, this is Watsu, uh, this is the main gate, um, this is uh, the manager of um, Harbin Hot Springs, the hotel, uh, she's great. Um, this is around 1912, uh, folks started visiting um, probably thousands and thousands of years ago to Harbin and uh, people were coming up from San Francisco um, at the turn of the century, even from the 1850s. Um, to visit the springs in northern Napa Valley and north of Napa Valley and at Harbin. Um, these are a little bit in random area. This is the village path from the Harbin Pool area out to kind of the meadow building. Um, this is the main building, Stonefront Lodge, uh, which has been around for um, possibly a century. Um, and the front room here was where all the sort of public social things happened um, in the 60s and 70s, um, workshops as well. Um, in the 70s, and um, since the temple has been built just down the hill from here, um, it's no longer, the front room is just kind of a, a living room. Um, I think this is partly blurry. I got a lot of these from the Harbin website um, to protect identities, um, but this is sort of soaking in the Harbin warm pool, and all of these people are naked, and uh, maybe they're cuddling, uh, maybe it's a, a sort of Harbin puddle. Um, hard a little bit to tell from this picture. Um, this is the inside of the Harbin Dome, of the Harbin Temple. Um, amazing kind of woodwork um, that went up in 2005. Uh, just a dream of a building. And Sunray still lives up in the Lake County area who built the, the architect and he's built all these very interesting, um, like totally wild buildings. Uh, uh, this is the conference center, the other main building Another main building, this is a dance there, Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Um, this is the theater, there are two films every night. They create an aspect of the Harbin virtual experience. It's interesting to go to those films you've seen over the years. And um, this is a, 
and maybe back in the 70s when it was pretty cold in the winter and uh, Ishvara was around, maybe films were a way to, you know, add an element to what might have been, probably might have been boring in the winter, hard to say. But the theater is quite nice and warm and comfortable. Um, this is a kirtan in um, the front of Stone Front Lodge, that front building. They're now down in the temple, um, but that's Buddha Al and that's Ganesha Das. And uh, he went to UC Berkeley um, behind the Nataraj, behind the Ganesha icon um, as an undergrad studied music. Um, camping on tent platforms out by the meadow throughout. Uh, this is the cold plunge. And it's a pretty new pool. And the sauna and the steam room are in through there. And the warm pool is over to the left, as well as the hot pool over to the left, as well as the cold pool. So the cold plunge is different from the cold pool. And to the right is the harb and heart pool. And farther to the right is the swimming pool. Taking a shower outside the warm pool. This is the heart pool, quite a beautiful little pool. Um, this is someone soaking at sunrise, I think, uh, in the warm pool. Uh, we're down at the conference center now. There's a pool here, not geothermally heated. The warm pool is geothermally heated, so it's the heart pool, so it's the hot pool. Um, beautiful conference center. Um, lots of workshops in that over the years. Uh, back to the Harbin warm pool. Two people, flowers every week, newly, right up here, a fig tree, which casts a beautiful kind of understory. <laughs> um, seems to grow very well above the warmth. Up at the domes, uh, this is the lower pool of the domes. The upper pool of the domes is just above there. You uh, could even imagine they took the design of this lower pool from um, the kind of uh, polar bear area at a zoo or something. There's a kind of under little cave here. Uh, the domes at night, the Harbin warm pool and pool of mainside areas across the valley to the dark side there. Back to the hot pool um, and folks just um, soaking. That's just right too hot. Uh, it takes a while to get used to it, but it's uh, quite, it's, there's a, I don't know if hallowedness is the right word. This was built by Bubblemeister this sculpture as was the railing. And um, this is where the hot water comes out into the warm pool, into the hot pool and the warm pool. The warm pool is just across the wall here. And so this is kind of the source of it all. And um, beautiful art as well. And up above is uh, this woman's head, her bust with flowers out of it and a big sign that says silence. And uh, this is the Harbin Conference Center. And it's just a circle of chairs, um, give you a sense of the space, the clear story above. Um, this is the, a, a picture from the Gardens of Bliss, this little 14-minute video I made that's on the web about the making of Harbin Hot Springs in Second Life. Gives some insight in how making works in this virtual world. Um, gorgeous build. It's like these big cliffs, and that's the ocean, and you can fly through there. Uh, back to the Harbin Conference Center, there's what could be at the end of a workshop or the middle of a workshop. There are about five people here, and they all are, um, who knows what workshop it could have been. All, they're all on cushions. Um, back to the hot pool again. Um, there's the whale. There's the silent sign. There's the flowers. The warm pool is here. The cold, plum, the cold pool is up above and pretty, it's like in this beautiful gully and it's all green and natural and just gorgeous. Um, the railings were made by Bubblemeister and so was the... How uh, oh, um, Yeah, maybe that's uh, 12 feet, 15 feet, maybe that's 20 feet, something like this. Back to the domes again. Looks like it could have been just when they were being built. An example of Watsu. Um, Harbin Temple from sort of the main side, stone front side through the grasses. Uh, this is a 1987 picture of the, of the Harbin Warm Pool. Uh, a little bit more rustic, a little more funky. Um, 
This is a picture of the pool area. That's the swimming pool, the warm pools up there. I haven't displayed these up on the screen like this. This is, um, I was amazed that I had this. I, got, I found this about five years ago. Uh, this is a uh, Harbin check-in pass from October 24th, 1995. Uh, the visit cost $24 mm -hmm. for a walk-in. So I was a walk-in. And uh, for about 15 years, it was $25 midweek. And it just went up this Memorial Day to $30 a night midweek. And you have to be a member as well. And so, so um, if you don't have a car, how do you put it on your back? <laughs> they're, they're not very, uh, I think I, I might have put this next to where I was camping up on the on the sleeping deck on on the <laughs> uh, that may have been to become a member at the time. Uh, Thirty. It was. It might, I might have been a a month long membership of Heart Consciousness Church for five at that time. Uh, good. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly a month. Right, right, right. So I guess it was on September 24th. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody else been there? Has anybody else, I think, see, that comes up in the second market? I've never seen that before. I've heard about it, but I don't know how it works. I've heard it's another way. Where are you from in Africa? Yeah. Where? Ghana. Ghana, okay. Yeah. This was. Um, Easter in 2005, and that's me playing the bagpipes, and that's a friend in the Easter Bunny suit, and there's kind of a New Age, uh, I'm not, interesting, uh, it's, it's very Harbin, eggs. Um, this is the beautiful temple from sort of the front side of it. Um, it's uh, got all these curves in the roof, and... Um, yeah, it's just a lovely structure. So, um, briefly into Second Life. So, questions thus far as Second Life boots up? Yeah, I would like to know how, how is the environment? Uh, it's yeah. Northern California landscape. Um, Ten months of sun, two months of rain. Um, it's a valley, pretty natural. Um, you can camp out. Uh, Is it cold in here or warm? Uh, I think of um, Berkeley and Oakland being warmer than San Francisco, and even the East Bay Hills being that much warmer. Maybe up on Skyline where you live. So it's about the same. Maybe. Hotter in the summer. Lower in the summer. Good. That's about lower a hundred in the days. Then you go to the pool. All right. And when you're in the waters, even the warm pool in the heat of the summer, 105, um, it's a whole different, and everyone's uh, hanging out just pretty freely. It's a whole different world. So you're, somehow being in the pool area in the heat of the summer, is, it's cool. It's nice. Um, middle town, four miles away, the, big, the little town nearby is hot. But up in the pool area, nice in the summers. Is this the ordinary site you would get, logging into Second Life? I'm, we're landing on one island. It's already pre-constructed. Right. So this is one island that's been built. For your islands to stay up with their builds, you have to pay Linden Lab, I think, $3,600 a year, plus maybe $1,000 sort of initial fee. Uh, so this is a Buddhist island, of all places. Hot Springs Buddha Yoga Center. And I was just looking around for a hot springs to show all of us. Um, and this is kind of nice. Um, this is the chat box. And it's um, reformatted because um, this screen and that screen together um, create a little less space. 
So we could chat in this. We could chat privately. We could chat public publicly with that. I'm going to close that for the moment. Um, and it would be great if someone else was in here and their avatar, because it would be much more informative. Um, this is the mini map, and I can see one other avatar on this island. Um, and here I am, and I'm looking in the direction of the triangle. So my avatar here, a Philo Arde, can turn around, and in this particular part of this uh, island, it's snowing. And I can go into the, wa the pool area. Okay, so now I'm in the water. And it looks like um, these floating pads um, are for two people. I'm going to see if I can hop up on it. There's a little mandala up there. So if you touch these balls, they say lay, cuddle, male, lay, cuddle, female. So you could... <laughs> I think it's um, descriptive and physical. <laughs> uh, and it's not doing it right now, uh, but maybe it's flipping around uh, this floating pad. So your avatar can disobey? Uh, you're like somebody else has got control of their mind. <laughs> The scripts can, work. Can you get control of somebody else's avatar? The scripts work in their own way. Um, no, I think Linden Lab people over in San Francisco can, but um, no, not right now. So these builds are sometimes um, just so-so in the way they work. Sometimes they don't always work as they're scripted to do so. So even though I clicked on that ball, I didn't get onto it. And when this becomes less cartoon-esque and more interactive movie real-esque, uh, I think it'll be a um, pretty compelling world. Uh, so we're going to fly here for a second. Um, So you can get a sense of this Buddhist island. Um, so you have, it's like a shrine or something. Um, basically, you can't fly beyond the borders of the ocean. And there's two types of communication here. Um, voice chat and type chat. So it's very stimulating to the imagination, and it will get more real and authentic. Is this tourism? Um, is this the touristic experience? In many ways, it could be. Well, we are the tourists. And, and, right, we can do a group tourist experience. But that guy's at home. Which guy's at home? That guy. <laughs> this oh, he's at home. <laughs> Um, so, and I'll just, uh, this is, um, and if you can even work um, you sort of bump off things. Yeah. So we just landed on the mandala. Oh, there's someone here, uh, Isolus. But um, let's just, um, let's go and see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to transport um, to one island, um, looking for. So now we're teleporting from this one 512 island by 512 island to Harvard's virtual island. And it reses. And over where those green dots are up there is the sandbox. So people are exploring building. And their builds and their tests 
last for four hours, and you can store them in your inventory and then put them away. So to make a virtual Harbin, like in something like this or something even like this, with this remarkable water as it gets better, will be very, very interesting. And uh, perhaps provide an alternative reality that would be, um, could be countercultural in the sense of Harbin. Um, it's where it all go, you know. <laughs> will we be able to, it's when um, we won't be able to tell that the avatars um, are irreal, I guess, yeah. that will be uh, a key moment. So just um, this is um, how to get in touch. Um, let me turn off the cam. I guess the camera's still on, and it's I think taking a picture of this. But um, okay. so this talk will be placed at um, my Helium YouTube channel. I sent it out to a bunch of folks, but it's YouTube Helium at Gmail dot com. You would Google that. Um, my website is here. The papers, um, including uh, this video talk, I will post here at Papers. Um, when my book comes out, I will. Uh, it will be at this website web page, which isn't yet made. So it's scottmccloud.com forward slash Harbin Hot Springs Ethnography with no underscores, no spaces. So that will be the URL. And um, that's another virtual reality. Right. So thank you. And uh, maybe we'll have a little question and answer now. That's a lot. Let me tell you something. I don't know anybody else here to speak that. Do you know what Watsu really means? Uh, uh, tell us. It's funny because it's so perfect. It's the pressure of harmony. <laughs> it's just perfect for I love it. ideological communitas. The pressure of harmony. Don't speak, no sex. Blah, blah, blah. Ideological communitas, huh? No, ideological pressure. The uh, pressure of, I'm sorry, the pressure of harmony. Interesting. You know, she answers a certain kind of pressure, guy answers another kind of pressure. Yeah, is that the sort of um, um, a kind of biological relaxation response of its own sort, different no, language? I think that actually, what it would mean. Would mean being like being a Japanese in a community that's just incredible pressure from everybody else around to keep on others. Right. Of what you think. Right. I found and in the I imagine that's very, very, very true in Harvard. So I think that should be the name of your book. I found in the bookstore um, at Harbin, Harbin also has a bookstore, a new book about Watsu, a couple new books published by Harold Dull, who's an Englishman who um, was the founder of Watsu. And there was some more direct mention of Watsus emerging from Japan um, in turn. But I've heard in many ways that Watsu um, has significant roots at Harvard. But a lot of this, and the fact you have all these different rules that you can have if you think you're around naked, is much more like Japan than any other place that has rules in the world. We were talking beforehand, Larry, with Kathy. Um, is there anything influenced by the 60s? That's what I think distinguishes Harvard. There was this. 60, the decade of the 60s, then Ishvara buys the property in 1972. He's still there, and it's in Northern California. That creates a continuity. Are there any hot springs, Nelson in, uh, or Kathy, in um, Japan that have uh, had an influx of young people in the 70s and then um, changed that you can think of? No, I think they were more conformist conformist as opposed to these people are harmony conformist. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about drink? Alcohol. I, I've seen, um, as I was coming up here, um, I smelled marijuana in the air from the parking lot to um, the, give this no, talk. No, 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 no. I've seen very, there's a history of substance abuse. But I, I, it, did it sell alcohol? No, it's, it's kind of dry. <laughs> so that's a question. You make Interesting. And the hot springs too. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily in the pool. Alcohol. alcohol is the one way of releasing you from this pressure of harmony. Right. In fact, it's used by companies that will get their employees together and get them all drunk, and then they will come up all the things they hate about their boss and so on, and the bosses write it all down and so on. And everybody forgets that anybody ever said anything. It's a huge learning process for the bosses. 
It's fascinating, yeah. But that's not only on their alcohol. I wonder what happened. So you're setting this up to the like there was LSD? I think in the 70s, um, Harbin attracted a bunch of folks who just wanted to escape from it all. And some of them were residents who helped make Harbin function um, in a very um, funky way. And among those residents and also visitors, there was a fair amount of substance abuse. So there were drinkers and there were uh, there was probably there were probably you know a lot of other drugs there. Okay. Um, now, much less in the past. Uh -huh. Where presumably you could do anything you want. In what ways does the virtual differ from these self-imposed rather strict rules of public? Today, when there's less, much less of that on the surface, um, it may have just gone all off property. Um, well, no, in, in, in virtual Harbin, are people reintroducing things that aren't there? Well, the virtual Harbin isn't yet built yet. So um, I've just shown you well, glimpses. Of, yeah, um, I, in other virtual spaces, I've seen people drinking, but people would be drinking you know, at their home computer and then um, in one way or another, uh, interacting representationally. Um, <laughs> Larry, Larry, you had a question? Turkey. Because they were, were people who don't have that with baths and showers. And so everybody in the neighborhood goes to the, the and there, there are several different schools. There's a real community. And men go at one time, women go at another. But people go in groups, they go with their friends. It's very deeply ingrained into things like uh, courtship because the women will, the mothers will check out. Spouses for their sons, and uh, it's um, unlike this though, where carbon nitrogen you know takes off and stuff. The commands are declining because uh, people don't live in uh, air quarters anymore without uh, baths and showers. Now everybody lives in the But apartment. they're taking on a part of this meeting because there are lots of people on you and others who want to go. Because it's community togetherness, and so they actually are taking people in other ways. People want to have them, but they have them more for the sort of psychological. They want this virtual community. Well, one of the main reasons people go is in the winter time to get warm. No, I mean even people. Yeah. I have a. I have a question. Which is a kind of a facetious question, but in a way, I think you were guilty of false advertising in your lecture title, and I hope you won't be guilty of false advertising in your book, because the title was Naked Virtual Carbon in Anthropology of Eroticism in the Theistic Imaginaire. And you got nakedness, virtualism, carbon, anthropology, tourism, and the Imaginaire, but there was actually nothing about it. Erotism in your talk. In fact, erotism is forbidden by the sign at the place. And even their little uh, example of the virtual tour that you gave was extremely chaste, and there was no, there was nothing of erotism in it at all. So my question is, where does erotism or eroticism come in? And also, I thought that the sign was rather peculiar because it said no sexuality allowed. And you have to have sexuality because people are even better women. Maybe you cannot have gender, and maybe you cannot have eroticism, and maybe you cannot have sexual activity. But you can't. But you have to have sexuality. So anyway, my question, which is sort of like a softball for you, whatever the sense, uh, where does eroticism enter into this, and how is eroticism different from eroticism? I see. Um very little difference in eroticism from eroticism. 
Uh, and I see the eroticism or erotic or erotism in uh, virtual Harbin in even words as simple as clothing optional uh, or nakedness or um, the milieu of the Harbin warm pool or in the wor in the milieu in the all the cuddling the naked cuddling um, the, some could define as sexual or erotic <laughs> quite explicitly but somehow Harbin's milieu um, Sort of, and Ish, Ish is, you know, Ishvara, the founder who still lives on property. It, um, Harbin's a sexual place, um, and you you, na you have to probably navigate um, the winds of modernity. Um, Harbin has uh, the managing directors, facetiously called the MDs, um, have um, over the decades. Um, perhaps the sign, it's hard to interpret the sign and why it emerged. Um, you don't have any of these of the Harbin tie-dye security folks um, coming around and saying um, no cuddling. Uh, you can't kiss in the Harbin warm pool. And in um, my uh, descript sort of characterization of um, a kind of Watsu experience up at the domes in the Harbin conference center, um, I could see that as being erotic. Um, in a variety of ways. I think doing the watsu, the suggestiveness of having the clothes on, um, the moving her sacrum toward the pool to kind of close the watsu down by the dome, by the conference center at the end. Um, erotic can be in a subtle and suggestive and not, um, you know, explicitly about uh, skin um, or, uh, and it's also in the mind. So it might be where, as I see it, people go um, with specific words or symbols or um, images. Um, the same as the Geneva, does everybody know that we're having a big international conference on tourism, the erotism, they don't say erotism in French, um, and uh, we will be going to the paper soon, it's going to be in Geneva, as I will keep it cool, um, in the academic year 13 14. But we Exactly right. But it's going to be the same way as the imaginary one that's down here. It's going to be organized by the people in Paris and, and the tourism studies working group. That's not in 200 years. We're at 2012 right now. This is 1314 is um, yeah. a, a little bit closer, yeah, like I a said, year away. 20, uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but, and a guy named Jean Francois Stasak, who is a professor in Geneva, is going to be talking about the arrangements. He's supposed to come to spend a year in Dutchman. And he's terribly afraid that his daughter is too shy to do this. So I'm moving up a page on this uh, end of a Word document. And uh, this is the, um, the website at UC for UC Berkeley stu um, Tourism Studies. And that's uh, you'll find it by searching on that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm moving down a page here. Um, and here's some resources. I just want to mention this in passing. Um, so I'm developing this big process of world university and school, like Wikipedia with MIT OpenCourseWare. And there are a couple of pages at world university and school um, that might be interesting. They're wiki. We can all edit them. One is this tourism studies page. So you go to that link. Um, it's all accessible through subjects. And all of this is at worlduniversity.wikia.com. And there's also an erotism page. And there's a very interesting hour-long sort of French documentary on women's orgasm, which is very well done and um, fascinating um, up there already. Um, and tur the Tourism Studies page has lots of resources, many of uh, central books to, I think, what comes out of this department. Um, so you go to uh, worlduniversityschool.wikia.com, go to subjects, and in this long list, you'll find both erotism and tourism studies. Um, you can edit this page or just you know, observe them. It's for open teaching and learning, free Creative Commons license. Um, other questions? Thank you. Oh, well, thank you.
Uh, good question. My um, focus here in many ways is ethnographically on Harbin. And the making of a virtual Harbin, with its particularly with its clothing optional pool area and its, all its um, naked pools, um, adds that element of erotism um, that affects its culture, its milieu. Um, and to have a virtual uh, Eiffel Tower, um, yes, you could have a bunch of avatars from all over the world take off their clothes and turn it into um, a garden of love, a summer of love in this virtual world. But it would be very different, um, perhaps. Who knows? You know, um, the, the builds in Second Life are very fluid. You could have it at Versailles or something, or um, a virtual Versailles. Um, is that answering your you, What I'm trying to get a sense, a sense of is if you can view the virtual, um, this virtual universe in computers and computers and like we're talking to you with all this technology, whether this is somehow lending itself more to, to let's say, the body forms of computers that they're talking about in the circular economy and uh, speaking to it and what other types of computers. If I make any sense. Uh, you're coming from a sort of types perspective of tourism, I think, yeah, yeah. and what um, might be specifically erotic tourism um, apart from the question of the virtual? Is this what you're asking? Well, what I'm just asking is the nature of the virtual tourism. Yeah. Lends itself more to the virtual world than the virtual world. Yeah. It's about imagination. It is imagination. Right. So I would say um, erotic imagination is different from student imagination. Um, the Eiffel Tower example um, or um, the broad category of tourism, um, you know, wouldn't necessarily, would, could, is very much involved in the imagination and authentic aspects of those imaginations, um, but um, isn't necessarily erotic. I, if I, um, if we can perhaps come into conversation more about this after. Yeah, yeah. Also, at the end of the question, at least in part, it sounds like you're talking about the generation being collaborative, but it's an armchair tourism. Armchair tourism metaphorically is the aspect of armchair tourism. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're asking, uh, if you're uh, sort of observing that there might be differences um, implicitly between uh, reading a book um, or going to a museum, the Louvre, uh, and traveling there, um, and multimedia influences, um, I would say what distinguishes multimedia um, from, and they're all, they all could be done from, you know, uh, the comfort of one's home. They're non-mobile, so this is mobile versus, compared to sort of stationary, um, would be immersion, interactivity, um, and uh, hypermedia, these five characteristics that Packer and Jordan observe um, and define multimedia as being in their 2000 and book, 2001 book called Multimedia. So, um, yes, uh, I, I think they're all, they could be all viewed as kinds of armchair tourism. But you could go to Harbin with um, hypothetical Harbin bubble glasses in five years and um, be in the Harbin Warren Pool. I've seen people with iPods and also reading physical books in the Harbin Warren Pool and be really quite enjoying um, what was going on inside your glasses at the same time that you were in the pool. Would that be armchair tourism inside your glasses um, with this interactive immersive environment? Um, maybe not um, because uh, you'd be getting um, a kind of double hit of, of, of virtual, you get this you know, the actual waters you know, on the ground in the pool, and you'd also be getting um, actual virtual waters that were more interactive movie realism. Oh, I just read something today, something like this. They could be used new football stadiums they're building, and the dance building, they built one called Boston, with the Boston. They have screens yeah. that are about as big as a football field. Huh. And they're very worried that people actually never will get a picture at all because with the high definition screen, 
screens, it's much better to look at the game on the screen in the stadium than to put your head down and watch the players. Uh, and yet, the, the other difficulty is that as people's home entertainment system get better and better and better, it's going to be the same, but they'll see at home almost as good as if they were watching the screen at the stadium, which is better than the real guys on the ground. I think there are other people who do points. Good point. Other questions? I have tons of questions, but there are also, I mean, maybe you've been screwed. I just opened a good mail I got from Wakayama University Faculty of Tourism, and there's a book, and it has a chapter it sounds dreadfully like your work. Ultra realistic sightseeing images using digital planetarium system. Now, figure that out. That may be the Japanese equivalent of what you do. Interesting, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, I, I mean, if you're if you're traveling in space by being inside a planetarium, um, I think that these five characteristics of Packer and Jordan's multimedia. Um, would further uh, distinguish um, sort of uh, a virtual experience from um, the experience that these uh, people are suggesting, and also um, that these will progress uh, when they when you can get hard and bubble glasses um, or these 16 panel screens at the MIT Media Lab that are m interactive movie realistic. Um, you will have um, a whole other. Uh, multimedia hyperized or something. Well, what this actually is interesting is a particular case. You know, planetarium is a dome of which the inside is all screen. They have somehow been able to record a piece of intangible cultural heritage called Shimotsuki Matsuri, which is the moon festival, in 360 degree dome. And then put people inside it and they watched it as though they were there without being in the dome. And they did the experiments as to what's, what's the difference between this hyper real representation of it compared to the people. So, so it's fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. And they're doing it in terms of experiments, so it's a little bit like your anthropological experiments. Um, and they're trying to relate it to tourism. And whether it could become a tourism destination. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, interactivity, immersion, um, hypermedia, new forms of narrativity uh, are four of the five characteristics that might distinguish multimedia experience from that. That sounds less multimedia-like than... Yeah, um, but it's interesting there. Um, I have tons of things to talk about. I won't know, but let me just put some words out, like... Uh, uh, Tyler was talking about what the uh, animistic people think dreams are, and that's very closely related to, to Second Life. What's the relation to the culture and the field work? It says pool play, and I wrote by mistake pool pray, <laughs> which comes from the title of my book on the other spirit. Play, pray, and play. Um, With and an A. Pool has a double, double resonance too. It could be just kind of pool and so on. Um, and I, I, the other thing I think is that I'm not sure what you're doing. It's a little bit like anthropology, as Levi Strauss would say, it's halfway between art and science. And you bring in bricolage, but you're not really doing bricolage. You're doing you're you're more analytic. So I think that it's you you're being syncretic rather than bricolage. Bricolage, you see, is un self-consciously putting together things without ever searching for the rules to do it. Or why those go together, and you're obviously not doing that. You're very analytic. Conceptually correct. Um, I wanted to say that I'm sure we can all put a dinner together um, uh, if we could find a place. Did anybody arrange a place? The other thing that Kathy pointed out is um, the football game will be getting out maybe in another hour or so. So wherever we go, it shouldn't be near here.